All right. So, hello and welcome to Cardboard Conversations. So, with us today, we have Ra, and this is our podcast version of the Cardboard Guide channel. So, this is all for your pleasure. We're doing interviews, and you can just go and, you know, on your way to and from work, a little commute, you can go and listen to this podcast and just enjoy the wonderful information that we're going to have from Ra today. So, yes. Sophie. Exactly. So, hi, Ra. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we would love for you to just do like a brief introduction. Who are you and uh, what's your background with TCGs? Sure, sure. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a great honor. You guys are some of the top sorcery content creators, so it's an honor to be <laughs> to be amongst you guys. Uh, so for myself, uh, I mean, I've been playing TCGs since I was uh, a wee young lad. Uh, started off playing Magic, got into Magic around 4th edition Ice Age, and I played pretty heavily up until around the Urza's block, and then I just got older and life, you know, kind of moved on in different directions. Um, and then I played on and off through the years. I've taught lots of people how to play Magic, um, you know, and it's been it's been pretty fun. But then uh, last year, I had kind of really fallen out of Magic and playing it. I still collected it a bit, but then I found out about sorcery through the Tolarian Academy and some other YouTube like yourself channels that were talking about the game coming out it hadn't even the kickstarter wasn't even out yet and we were trying to figure out like when is it actually coming you know when is when is all the product getting here so i started playing some tts with a friend and we you know fell in love right the tactical aspect of the game with the magic type play is really fun lots of fun so i'm, I'm very excited to kind of be part of the sorcery community as a whole by organizing these events and helping bring people together cool that's awesome to hear we're just gonna say hello hi there christian in chat and please do feel uh, welcome to ask some questions we'll be sure to check back with live chat every now and then so do hit us up with some more questions if you have any or if you have any for ra um so what has your experience been because you just mentioned that you do some organizing for sorcery what kind of events have you been organizing and why did you decide to start them uh well let's start with the starting them um so with the whole story of learning about sorcery last year uh knowing that they were going to be at gen con kind of always wanting to go to gen con so mm -hmm. i made it a huge point to make it to gen con last year I wasn't able to sign up for the, any of the events because they were all sold out like instantly in February. Mm -hmm. So me coming in later in the year, uh, but I was able to get there. I was able to meet the sorcery team. I was able to kind of play a few games there. Uh, it, it was great. It was great to just be there with all that energy and just the seeing people actually enjoy the game and have fun with it, right? Not just having that, let's go and win, right? Let's go and have some fun and hang out and, and yeah. play this game, you know? And I think that when I brought that same mentality back to Baltimore and started pushing for the local community there, that it was the same thing. Like I was seeing the same exact result that people were, you know, when they gave it a chance, they fell in love with it because there's so many aspects of the game to fall in love with. I mean, I myself was a player before an organizer, right? I was definitely into learning the mechanics and the intricacies of the game before I even was like, oh, let's do some tournaments. But, uh, but after I got back from Gen Con and I started building the community and working with the stores and trying to, you know, get people into playing, I, I wanted to do a little more. I wanted to make, uh, you know, make the competition aspect of it a little more shining, right? Because it is a kitchen table TCG type game. It also has a competitive aspect. It's a game. There's a winner, right? Yeah. And I know that there's, there's a community of people that want, like, specifically that aspect. They want a lane to be able to say, hey, where's our path to being a pro? Where's our path to being a top-level player? And so I was working and, you know, made some, made some arrangements. And now we have the, the Courtesan Cup, which has qualifiers across the United States. And we're going to be concluding that at the Spring Sorcery Social in Baltimore, June 14th, 15th, and 16th. And so that's going to be quite exciting, quite exciting, not just to see the end of that tournament, but also that overall event, which I, you know, I'm pretty sure we'll talk about more here in a little bit. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, because we know that, that you have arranged for this event to be really immersive. It's going to be, you know, all in on sorceries. It's going to be the Courtesan Cup finals, 
but it's also going to be a complete weekend retreat at a hotel and there's going to be a lot of stuff to participate in. So could you tell us a little more about what's actually going to take place at the event? Oh, of course, of course. Oh. Um, so at the Spring Sorcery Social, we're going to not only have the Courtesan Cup, we're going to have lots of constructed, draft, sealed events, as well as some entry points, right? One of the things we haven't talked about yet that much are learn to plays, right? Places for people to come to the event who are interested, have only played a little bit. They'd like a little bit more instruction, maybe someone to help clarify some of the aspects of the game before they did a draft, or maybe they're not interested in drafting at all. They just like to engage in the game at a casual level. Right. And we want to be able to make sure that everyone knows that at the Spring Sorcery Social will have those those events. Right. Those things will be happening. Some of them will be organized. Right. We'll have the organized play aspect. But then some of it will be here's space for you guys to do what you'd like. Right. Here's space for you to learn. Here's space for you to casually play, trade and, and do other things. Right. And that's just from the game side of it. Right. I mean, to the immersive part. Uh, I don't know the exact numbers right now, but I think we're floating around 20 unique paintings of sorcery cards that we will be displaying throughout the event. And I, I don't know if we're going to even spoil some of the art, but I will say that I know for a fact we'll have at least one Brian Smith piece hanging on the walls. Oh, is that the punch butcher? I don't know. We'll have to, <laughs> you'll have to see. <laughs> wow, that's going to be exciting to see what is actually, what kind of Brian Smith art that is. And we also know uh, that this is taking place at a hotel and you might be able to actually stay at the same hotel so you can just rent the room and be there the you know, whole day, go sleep and come back right down. And you're going to have an entire lobby, right? Filled with mm -hmm. sorcery art. We'll actually have uh, two floors. So the hotel uh, has an entry floor that's uh, elevators and this really beautiful marble staircase. Uh, I'm going to actually get with Marcellus here in the future before the event, and we're going to have a little bit of footage of what it's like to walk into this place, which is just beautiful. If you, if you love architecture, if you're into any of that aspect of, you know, anything <laughs> then you'll you'll enjoy that aspect of of the venue but then the second and third floors all of the space that they have available in the common space will be taking over so as you walk into the lobby of the of the hotel you'll see sorcery painting on the wall right you might see a drew tucker piece you might see a jeff mengus piece maybe an elvira piece right there's lots of <laughs> lots of uh Lots of things um, that you'll be able just to see as you just start getting in to check into your room, right? And we have a room block at the event. So we've gotten and worked with the hotel on, uh, I forget the exact number of rooms available, but it should be enough and we can expand as long as the hotel has space, right? And there's interest mm -hmm. for, for getting more rooms. And we actually just recently expanded the offering of rooms to include double rooms because uh, initially I think we had a little... It was only on uh, single rooms or something, but we've since uh, resolved that. So now there's a lot more offerings as far as people being able to reserve at the hotel. And it has a restaurant. And then we're also working on getting some local venues, right, as to, you know, maybe offer coupons and at least kind of let everyone know, hey, if you didn't want to stay and eat at the hotel, there's lots of options, right? We're in a pretty big and popular part of the city of Baltimore. Lots of different cuisine options that there are. So... Oh, that sounds yeah. amazing. So this sounds like it's going to be a pretty big event. Do you have like an estimate of how many people do you have like space for? Uh, funny you mentioned that. I was, I'm was i working with uh, the diagrams now to get exact final seating. We'll have that next week finalized, you know, fire marshals, all of that, all yeah. that fun stuff. Right <laughs> now, <laughs> right now, I we have the ability to handle about 550 people. Oh, wow. that's amazing. Um, maximum right yeah. so and that's not including like the 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 vendors and the and some of the staff to help support the events judges and things like that but as far as like players and and guests to either coming from the cup qualifier or coming from ticket purchases there's a place for you at the event oh but that's amazing that's going to be by far like the biggest 
sorcery event so far. So what inspired you like to do an entire weekend and not just like the Cornish and Cup finals, but also like a lot of side events and also some other events going on. Um, what inspired you to do like this completely immersive experience? Because you could also just have said, we're going to do the finals and that's it. Right. Um, and we thought about that. And if uh, if you caught our web page earlier on, in fact, that's kind of what we were saying is like, hey, we're going to do this thing. And this is ab this is absolutely what we're going to be able to do. Uh, but if we get more interest and we get, you know, people telling us that they want more, then we're ready to do more. Right. And at the time, I think we were looking at uh, a different hotel and, you know, organizing the space in a different way. Uh, since then, we've we've moved to a new venue, the Monaco, Baltimore. Beautiful, beautiful place. It's located in downtown Baltimore. Um the decision was from everyone giving me feedback, right? Yeah. People saying, Hey, we want, we want to come just to play. We want more drafts. We want, you know, more constructed play. I want to come and meet people to trade. Right. And so the more we were getting that, the more we felt that it was the right thing to do to make an event to allow this to happen, right. To give everybody this environment and community of sorcery focused on sorcery with sorcery artists sorcery art on the wall with sorcery games right uh we're working on some vendors uh hopefully sorcery based right maybe singles vendors and some other you know collectible type mm. things so yeah and you also mentioned artists so there's also going to be artists there right oh yes oh yes so the artists will be vending as well as participating in workshops uh those workshops are not hammered down yet i'm i'm actually getting some of that information now um i do know i do know one i can tell you right now <laughs> that <It's not> yet. <laughs> that 9 a.m on saturday morning alan pollock will be doing an ap during his the first workshop slot so if you want a chance to to see that and and you know maybe even hear some of the stories that Alan has to say, you would want to you'd want to be there, right? And kind of and engage and and see what he's doing. Yeah. So can you give us like a rundown for people who don't know, or maybe this is like the first they've heard of it? Uh, what are the artists that are going to be joining you? Oh yeah. So uh, from the website listing, I'll kind of list them in that order. Yeah, sure. uh, so we have we have Jeff Mengus, we have Drew Tucker. We have Alan Pollock, Tony Sudlow, and Truett Parrish. So all of these guys have confirmed. We're working on getting them here. Uh, in fact, we're in the middle of making all of those arrangements now. So, yep, that's, uh, that's the list. I don't think we're going to be changing that anymore, though. We are kind of maybe working on some surprises. We'll see. Yeah, but I mean, five sorcery artists, that's pretty impressive. That's going to be really cool. Also, I mean, uh, most of them did major stuff for Alpha and Beta, but we already know from like the two spoiled cards that one of the cards from Ethereum Legends is actually Tony's card. So, I mean, we also have like an Ethereum Legends guy, um, and that's going to be very interesting to see if he might be willing to say some more oh, about yeah. Ethereum Legends. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, That'll Definitely. be cool. And, and during the Q and A's, you know, maybe, maybe some of that can come out. Who knows? Uh, mm. that'll be, it's months away. So that's, I don't know. We'll see. I, that's really kind of going to be on each of the artists and what they're able to, to share at the time. So. Yeah, for sure. And how much we, we might have more real cards by then one could hope we get a card or two in between now and June. So if we go back a bit, what was it exactly that really enticed you with sorcery? Because presumably, since you stopped with magic, there's been a ton of other games that you could have gone into. What sort of made you go out of hibernation and go for sorcery? The grid. Yeah, it, it was the grid, the the tactical aspect of the game that it was actually being played out, you know, kind of on a you're building the board as you go type thing, right? The positioning of, of units matter, right? That to me was the huge breakaway, the big, why is this different than any other TCG? And that would be why, right? You have other games that use lanes and, and other things. And I've played a lot of those games, uh, you know, with varying levels of fun, but with sorcery, 
it's it's just great and then you know the cards themselves right you look at the mm -hmm. set of sorcery and you're like well where are the bad cards right and you you can even point at like battering ram that nobody really plays with but i tell you what if walls were popular that card would get yeah. one of at least in every deck right and i was even thinking about this earlier today about like just the general like counter aspect of the set right if you have spirits are taking over well don't worry You've got counters for that. You have Rest in Peace and you have the Templar, right? So almost any angle that you're like, oh, I'm going to go Mortals. Well, that's cool, but you have Mortality and you have King of the Realm, right? Mm -hmm. You have checks and balances throughout all of these aspects, right? Like Mortals, where's the, where's the Mortal meta? How come nobody's playing Mortals? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, you have Call to War, right? You have just so many cheap value Mortals. I, I'm, I'm waiting for it. It's going to be there and it might even take on Fury Road. Who knows? That's really cool to hear because that's also one of the things that's been like a whole debate with beta being here and there's not that many boxes outside of the US that like people are, oh, the meta is solved. But I mean, we have 402 cards to build with. So, and even just like seeing March of the Mortals, the event last weekend, it was mm -hmm. clear that I don't think any people had a lot of money on Enchantress actually taking the whole tournament down. So I think <laughs> there's a lot of unsolved meta still. So what are you playing personally? Uh, I personally am playing a, a homebrew spirits deck that I've been working. Um, I haven't had a lot of chance to like really play and tune it, but over the last month or so, I've tuned it down to where it actually starts to win. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a good place to be. <laughs> you know, it, it's just been a long road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm playing spirits, so mainly it's, it's really spirits. It's get out the headless haunt, get out the ghost ship and wreck some people up, right? <laughs> I mean, and then I can't forget my favorite card, Blaze, right? Blaze is just, oh, I love that card so much such a great card yeah and it does a lot for you in the deck for sure and hi welcome to the chat uh power mod arcade welcome and sleep stories by eli welcome to you as well do feel free to ask any questions if you have questions for ra while he's here um so you're organizing this event are you doing everything by yourself or are you like a group of people that are trying to get this event organized so i i guess i would consider myself the leader of the group um Yes, there are a few other people helping with various aspects. A uh, big shout out to, to Josh, Lord of Itza, who I'm sure if, if anybody's been in any of the discords has seen at least one of his posts for, <laughs> <laughs> for our events. Um, so, you know, he's been doing that. Uh, Marcellus, paparazzi, he's been handling a lot of the live stream aspect of the events. Uh, we're going to get to see him again, maybe. We're definitely going to get to see him again in, uh, in April at uh the florida top eight qualifier and there might be a couple more surprise visits from him uh at some of the other tournaments as we get closer to the cup and then we have a couple other people miscellaneously helping in the back scenes uh mark from no land beyond uh doug who's kind of been there from from the beginning of all of it just helping build the community so we have a, we have a pretty good team uh lots of varying levels of expertise um so it's been fun. Uh, it's been challenging. I mean, still yeah. have to make a lot of the calls and a lot of the decisions, uh, which is fine, but you know, it's still responsibility. Indeed. Yeah. And it's also, yeah, as, as, as Sophie mentioned earlier, this might, I think it is the biggest sorcery event so far in the world. So of course there's going to be a lot of stuff to do. And if you just, um, if you just know, tuned in to the channel and the podcast right now, we are talking about the Spring Sorcery Social that is coming up in June, I believe, right? Yep, June 14th, 15th, and 16th. Yes. Yeah, so it's going to be a complete weekend of sorcery immersion with artists and the Courtesan Cup final and also a lot of different events that you can participate in. Yeah, and I really yeah. like the idea that you're like doing also some learn to plays because a lot of the events... I've been focused on like bring your constructed deck, play mm. out, have fun. But I mean, we also need to onboard a lot of new players and like get the game out to people. And those learn to play events are really going to be essential for that. Exactly, exactly. And I think there's there's a there's a lot of people that know about the sorcery game, but aren't sure where their engagement point is. 
right? Yeah. And I think with an event like this that, you know, for someone that's maybe been into magic, you know, maybe been into the old magic, old school magic, right? Has heard of sorcery. It's like, oh, you know, that sounds like a cool game, right? Mm. And then they see an event like this, right? And, and the entry isn't that, you know, the bar isn't very high to come to the event that, you know, hey, let me give this a try, right? I get a ticket, I go and I learn to play, right? I get some cards and, you know, I can take them home and, and play afterwards, right? And play with friends and teach other people and give it a shot, right? And if at a minimum, I could check out these artists and check out these workshops, mm. right? So there's there's still lots of lots of flesh, if you will, on the bone for the event outside of the competition and the quarters and cup aspect of it. Yeah, for sure. So hi there, Brutus Hours. I'm just seeing him sneaking around in chat. <laughs> Happy to have you here. It's always good to see other Hello. people from the uh, community that you know. It's very nice that people check in. So um, at the Learn to Play events, do you have like a focus on like trying to teach people mechanics? Are you using the pre-context? What will be like the style of the Learn to Plays? Got you. So we may use the pre-cons. Uh, it's going to be a matter of like acquisition from that aspect, but we're working yeah. on some, some avenues of like what we can do for that. Um, at a minimum, we're going to be using the, uh, well, I call them famous cause I've talked about them a lot. The Zalem, uh, yeah. popper decks, yeah. which we had a lot of fun with, uh, for many months until beta came out because there was not really any alpha. So we were using those decks for months and it was a lot of fun. Right. And they still have lots of levels of engagement that you can teach about the interactions of the game. So I think that, you know, at a minimum we'll be using those at, you know, the ideal we'll be using the precons, um, you know, as they were kind of intended to be used. Yeah, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's also the great part about sorcery that, we're actually able to to make some some very good decks by just using ordinaries so if you're out there and you do not have enough cards to do all the decks you want definitely go through your pile and, and do some some pauper decks because they are actually really fun to play yep and i think some of the some of the discussion we're having right now on the social club discord is what format should these other side events be, right? Should we be exploring some other options, some other ways to play, ways to structure the games, right? Um, I know one of the one of the big conversation topics that I've had in a couple of, of channels is best of one versus best of three, mm. right? Um, for instance, I, I was playing my friend Bonnie last night, and she has this deck that we built called, uh, what do we call it, Pressure Cooker, which is a pretty pretty heavy aggro deck. It's just meant to beat your face off, right? <laughs> yeah. I've not been able to beat it. Like I, that with my Spirits deck, I, I've played it several times. I just can't seem to get a foothold. But then last night, I beat her twice. Now, I beat her because my draws were just great like both games i had philosopher stone early i had the mechanism <laughs> i wasn't playing guessing games i was just putting things where i wanted them right um and that changed the dynamic because i got two really good start draws right i got two really oh. good momentum points i doubt I, I bet you tonight if i when we go to the the social at the no land beyond i'm not gonna win Right. I'm, I'm sure it'll be, you know, back to the way it was. Um, so the best of one, best of three to me, I feel like we need to have that discussion, whether it's time to start doing best of three yet. I don't think it is based on the feedback I'm getting, but yeah. I think we should at least have the conversation because to say that, you know, playing the game once is a true testament to whether you should have won that match or not. I'm not I'm not wholly convinced, right? Mm. But I don't think we're I don't think we're at a place yet to be able to have a good structure for the best of three. No, exactly. Also, because some other rounds might also take quite some time, so having a best of three might be a bit too time consuming. But if, it, it might be more fair in you know in the final final to actually have a best of three instead of just a best of one, maybe even with a sideboard. That could be kind of cool. Well, one of the one of the dialogue pieces and oh wow, somebody played Bonnie. That's awesome. I'm glad you were able to to interact with her. She she's so she's such a good person. Um if you guys get a chance to play with her at any of the events, you should try. Great great time. Um 
Sorry, I saw the comment. I wanted to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Absolutely. You're spreading the love. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, what was your question again? I'm sorry. To, to maybe have a best of three in the, the you know, ultimate final. So it's okay. uh, a little less random and, and depending <laughs> on, on having those right draws. Well, the feedback I've gotten there has been that it allowing sideboards currently can shut out other avatars, right? Because if yeah. you had, you know, you're playing against an enchantress. All right, well, fine. Literally get rid of eight cards, put in your disenchant, you will mess them up, right? Yeah. It, it will be a bad time for them. Even yeah. though you can, you're, you're ditch, ditching eight cards, but you're going to get eight guaranteed useful, you know, and interrupt cards. So I think that there's some validity to that argument, right? And I think that as the game grows and as some of these things become more fleshed out, right? One of the one of the things with best of three and sideboards I was bringing up was like, okay, if we're saying that an avatar aspect, then let's put an avatar on the sideboard, right? Allow mm -hmm. them to switch out the avatar. So again, you know, we're talking and I'm I'm taking in a lot of feedback. I don't know if we'll see best of three in June. Um, it still might be too early, but you know, yeah. I think that again, the conversation we should be having and finding out why, why, why are we not doing it? Is it a time thing? If it's a time thing, maybe it'll never happen, right? Yeah. Or maybe as people get more familiar with the game and feel that 30 minutes is more than enough time to finish a match, right? Because right now, I think 90 minute best of three is where you would have to be and that's a long yeah. that's a long round that's right long round. yeah and, and i also think depending on the deck you're playing it might be difficult to actually get to fill out three rounds within those 90 minutes just because there's also some familiarity maybe not in like the top seats and not in the final but for some of the other people i think it would be too difficult yeah. to like get it down to 30 minutes and also you know 90 minutes if you're having for instance four rounds yeah that's 360 minutes that's uh well above <laughs> that's, that's that uh five five hour straight it's or pretty something. intensive definitely for sure so, <laughs> that might exactly. be a good on the players exactly exactly so like i said probably not going to be seeing the best of three anytime soon but you know having that conversation and, and knowing why we're not doing best of three is also i think important right not just for us the organizers but also the community that's participating yeah. of like you know why aren't we doing best of three why what's up with that right yeah for sure because i also saw some people ask it in the live stream for march of the mortals and they were saying like if this is really about skill and like showing what your deck can do, it should probably be best of three, um, but it is so time consuming. And I and I, like you said, I think it's a question of time maybe. I think we, we're just not there yet, but we probably will end up being there at some point, I hope. Yeah. Well, an again, interesting, oh, go ahead. Yeah, but but then again, it might also prompt people to, to maybe seek out less unique cards and, mm. and more ordinaries and exceptionals simply because you have a, a greater average of drawing the right cards that yeah. you might need. So if you are thinking a little bit about statistics and deck building, that, that might also be a venue for, for other decks. Yeah, definitely. And, and best of one does allow for some creativity also because mm. you, you might see anything during that game. Very true. Um, and on the note of time, right, uh, during the Baltimore event, one of the games that like i think the only game that went to time during the side constructed event was between two pretty skilled players i'm pretty sure they made uh pretty high rankings in the league in fact one of them was was uh none other than mr uh jared the oh. champion of gen con yeah so yeah, they yeah. were they had they had gone to time and i think it was um an enchantress verse i forget what the other what james was playing but anyway, I'm saying that uh, even at the higher levels, right? They were getting yeah. they were getting to time, um, and we've seen I've seen I've had events where the matches were like 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then we were just knocking them out. We were out before we knew it, and it's like, oh, should we do another event? You know, should yeah. we go again? Um, so, but it varies, and I think that you know, as the skill levels and familiarity levels, mm -hmm. right? There's 403 cards in the set. I still exactly. am like, oh, what does that card do again? I haven't yeah. seen it in three weeks. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I think there's a, there's a little bit of that as well. And then you know, the interactions. I think you know, the game is still early, right? I mean, we're we're literally in a set called beta, 
right? And as a software, as a as a software engineer, you know, beta is we're still testing it out. Hopefully, it's working. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you might you might see some bugs. Um, so I kind of feel the same way about the game. I know that they just released the new rules earlier this year, mm-hmm. right? With some some really nice clarifications. I like the projectile changes. I feel yeah. like the stealth changes were needed, but didn't necessarily help make it easier to understand. Um, and then I think there's still a few interactions. Like uh, the biggest one that I've seen and I personally get tripped up with is the intercepting. Yeah. So let me yeah. ask you guys, without without looking it up, is it intercept from or intercept to? Are they leaving from and you intercept, or are they coming to and you intercept? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I don't think I would be able to say like offhand. I, I would I would say that they are leaving a certain point, and you know, along the way you are intercepting them before they're able to hit the site, for instance. I, I see. Here's the crazy part. I've looked up that answer five times in the last two weeks i cannot i'd have to look it up right now just to make sure that i wasn't getting it backwards again yeah let us um, know in chat if yeah, anybody in chat is like sitting there googling the rules yeah just put it in chat yeah that also would be nice becomes thing. even more you know challenging if, if you're trying to block with two defenders at the same time it's like how's damage still then and who decides you know which is this is this the attacker first and is it the attacker doing you know, damage first to to one defender and then another combat round to the next defender and yeah i, th- I think intercepting is a bit confusing still but mm, yeah i recently made a couple bad calls there uh about that specific thing so apologies to who to whoever got that bad call but again that's also the thing about new game and we're still like clarifying the rules and making them completely crystal clear here so um in speaking of the event I think I heard some people who were like, "Um, we're not going because we're not invited. So I just wanted to stress that you can still buy a ticket and you can go join some of these really cool events. There will be like workshops. You can go join a draft. You can go join SEAL, Constructed, whatever. So just like putting it out there for everybody watching that, you know, the Spring Sorcery Social is not just for the courts and cup. There's lots to do, even if you're not, you know, invited by invitation to that event. Right, right. In fact, uh, I was I was talking to a couple of the members today that, you know, maybe we should have renamed it the the sorcery social con (laughs) and kind of (laughs) and kind of, uh, you know, make the name a little bit more. And admittedly, when we first came up with this, it wasn't going to be anything. We were going to have maybe an artist or two at No Land Beyond and do a thing there. Right. Um, So, you know, it's kind of like we've. We've grown into this bigger thing, and we we still have that other name. And it's like, do we rebrand? Do we not? Is it too late? Is it too, you know? So I think we're gonna probably keep everything as it is now, um, as far as like rebranding things. But uh, to your point, yes, the Spring Social is all about sorcery. It's not just about the quarters and cup. The quarters and cup is for the people who want to compete. Right for those high-level players who are able to qualify at one of the qualifiers and play at this very high level of play, the Spring Social is for everybody. For people who want to learn how to play, learn how to engage with sorcery, people who want to play casually, right, with other people who aren't necessarily trying to win the top prize or to you know make their record good, mm-hmm. right. And then for those people who do, for the people who want to go for some of the prizing, right, we have. Overall, all of our events are going to have pack per win support. So off the bat, no matter no matter what, and we're, we got some more announcements about prizing in the future, you're going to get, by just playing and winning, you're going to get pack per win. And I think we're also trying to support the participation pack as well. Uh, but don't hold me to that one yet. I'm going to have to yeah, check the absolutely. numbers. So if you're already sitting out there and you're thinking this sounds way too cool to miss out on, please do check out like the description down below when we're done with the live. You can check out the direct link so you can go get your tickets or you can just go check out and see what there's like what kind of events there's being offered because there's so much to see. So speaking of all like these different formats, what's your own personal favorite way to play sorcery? Is it multiplayer, constructed, draft? Seals, what do you like the most? Hmm, that is a good question. Um, I'm torn, I guess, between constructed and draft. Um, mm. 
the the I love cracking packs, right? Sorcery is just one of those <laughs> like ah, oh, so fun. It's just oh, yeah. too much fun. Um, so there's that aspect, but then there's also that like dynamic of building the deck, right? And I always challenge yeah. myself to like how how low end can I make my deck? And the meaning, uh, how many not elite cards, how many not unique cards, and even not exceptional cards can I use to to win? Right. And oftentimes most of my decks in draft are like primarily ordinaries with exceptionals. In fact, I rarely use the elites or uniques unless it's like a death dealer or something that's going to actually like truly impact the game when you get it. Um, in fact, I think one of the first, if not the first beta draft I did, I drafted a death dealer and I kid you not, every game he came out and he effectively won me the game. <laughs> It was a, it was really cool, right? It was a really cool experience. Um, so I like that aspect. I like that challenge of like building the deck. Um, for me, the the constructed aspect, I like playing through a strategy that I know as well, right? Yeah. I like having that expectation of like, all right, so I see we're here. Uh, I might be getting one of these cards. You know, here's the next position, the next move. It's harder to do those kinds of things in a draft environment, mostly because, well. You, you, how long have you had to really learn the deck, right? Yeah, how many, yeah, for sure. You know, you're not getting many vial amps, and if you are, then somebody's drafting wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, that's so true. Yeah, yeah so I miss some of those beastly, godly cards. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, so definitely. So, in terms of like the event. Do you expect like to see mostly people from the community or are you trying to also focus on advertising to some new players? Uh, that is a great question. Something I've actually been thinking about because um, even though there's a, a handful of people on the in the social club as members or whatever helping run things, uh, I still consult with other people outside of the social club. and. Yeah, that's one of the things we're thinking about, especially in the general Baltimore area, right? The, the TCG scene is very large in the DC area oh, as a whole and trying to reach some of those people with the same messaging, right? Like, hey, this is a sorcery focused event. If you're interested or on the fence about the game, this is a great place to come and check it out, right? Come and learn about the game, come and learn the game or come engage at a competitive level. Yeah, Definitely. for sure. Absolutely. So I didn't know the community was large there. So do you like do you find when you're playing with people that is like people who don't know TCGs at all that are coming to sorcery? Or is it mostly like we spoke about there's a lot of older magic player who are like, you know, tired of the current direction and then moving on to sorcery? Um, I would say there's a mix. Uh okay. A mix of, of people. We've had a lot of people where this was the first TCG they've interacted with, which yeah. was really neat. Um, they knew about other games, but you know, this is yeah. the first one that they've really engaged with. And then mm -hmm. there's there's a good portion of people who kind of disenfranchised with other big popular games for one reason or another. Right? I know for me yeah. personally, what was it? Uh, when War of the Spark was out for Magic, uh, was it Terror of Time? Reveler or whatever that yeah. card was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that card. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the magic joy for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah that was uh, yeah, that was just no fun. <laughs> we got an honorable mention actually at the uh, Tularean Community College that had the five best planeswalkers ever printed mm. magic, and he wasn't uh, among the top five, but he was definitely an honorable mention because wow, that card was annoying. Yeah. I just. Every time I saw a sorry, I was like, yeah, quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to say hi to Angleworm, who also joined. Cool oh. to see you. Hey, what's up? What's up, Mr. Um, Angleworm? So a, a really interesting thing is sort of going on with tournaments right now. It seems like a lot of the prizes are like turning into be, of course, some pack support and stuff, but there's also being created a lot of new art for the winners of these tournaments. And we got the great honor of spoiling the sketch that you uh, decided to share with us. Can you talk a bit about what is that sketch and why did you decide to like uh, commission a piece of art for the winner? Sure, sure. So 
coming into this event, uh, really kind of not talking to a lot of the community members yet, having just like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. What do I need? I need this. I need to find a venue. You know, just I, I know what I need to do. Let me just start doing it. Yeah. Um, and part of that was like I wanted to do, I wanted to do something related to the game, right? So painting, right? O original yeah. pieces, yeah. Hand, hand painted art, right? Because the digital art is is everywhere. In fact, I was talking to somebody earlier because they were showing me some mats, and there was like a, I think it was Soren or something, uh, and I was like, oh, that looks really good, but like, I, I just know that you know it's. it's it's not hand painted and I feel like sorcery has kind of turned me into this almost art snob of sorts of like, it's good. Don't <laughs> yeah. get me wrong, but yeah, they didn't yeah. actually like paint it, you know? And so, <laughs> and so that to me was like, why do you want to put art to the prizing? Because I want it to be connecting with the game, right? The aspect yeah. of the game that I, that I love, right. Which is the art aspect is not just the gameplay. Um, and, you know, at the time I didn't, you know, maybe I could have reached out to Drew and said, hey, can you do like an alt art version of the courtesan for, for the tournament? But I didn't, I mean, that thought didn't even cross my mind, honestly. And I have some friends in Seattle who, that they, they chose to go down the traditional route, right? They didn't go the digital media. They didn't go graphic design. They went, we're going to go learn how to do oils. We're going to go learn how to do this old, you know. And I say old because not a lot of people are doing it anymore, right? This old way of doing of doing art. So when I reached out to them, they were very, very, you know, excited and, and you know, yeah. And I, I don't know. I I kind of kind of gone back and forth. But then uh, when Justin had kind of introduced me to Lindsay's work, I just was blown away. I mean, if you ever go to her Instagram, just some of her work on there and, you know, the the female form is just phenomenal, right? And so to me, that was just like, oh, okay, this person, this is the person that needs to do the painting, right? They, they, they understand what I'm going to be looking for. And, you know, we had a little bit of a talk back and forth and that, you know, has turned out to the sketch, um, which will hopefully be revealing the painting, uh, on what is it april 20th during the florida qualifier we're hoping to oh, yeah i don't i don't know if we're going to have uh the original with us but we will have a high quality scan that we can reveal and then once we reveal it there then we'll reveal it in other channels and and everybody can see what the what the nice prize painting is so yeah it's going to be really fun. That is really awesome. I must say that I was like completely blown away just by the initial sketch. I like the position of the figure and like just the light and shadow playing on her, her body is just amazing. Mm. So I can't wait to actually see that original painting when it's done. It's going yeah. to be awesome. Yeah. And I also have a, you know, a lot of references to the Frank Facetta, uh, courtesan. Yeah. So I, I thought it was, yeah, okay. I, I see some sort of, you know, homage to, to the original Presetta art. Yeah, and I thought it was so, like, it's so spot on that, of course, it has to be that with the name of the Cortes yeah. and Cup and everything. I thought it was really nice. Uh, so we have another member on the chat going high and saying that he's enjoying the archives of the realm. That's another fun thing. There's so many people doing so, I mean, a lot of awesome content around sorcery. And you're also like starting to do some content. Will you be like posting stuff from the, uh, from the finals and from the gameplay overall? Oh, yes. So in June, we plan to have pretty much a full production. Um, we're going to have uh, cameras in most of the rooms. We're going to have highlight tables. The workshops, you know, like we'll be able to capture as the artists are painting, as they're talking, um, as they're doing like the Q and A's and stuff. So, you know, I think we're going to have a lot of live coverage and then we'll have a lot of things that we can present after the fact in case you were not at the event and, you know, kind of see what you missed out on. Definitely. Uh, as Europeans, we feel that uh, we are so <laughs> <laughs> totally missing out at the moment. Yeah. We are really happy that everyone is getting on board with like, you know, both broadcasting live with a lot of it, but also doing videos afterwards. That's amazing because we are sort of like uh, left behind a bit here. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's the oh, I always miss it. Is it social? Socially? No, it's 
the spring sorcery spring. social <laughs> spring sorcery social you should see us do the video i had to do so many retakes because i was like oh it's it's s s s i i, I like the alliteration but i like i kept it up every time but it, it's you said that that we can see that we're going to you know what you could be missing out on is it going to be a recurring uh, recurring event I mean, I think that is greatly leveraged on the success of the event, right? Yeah, the, yeah. If we get the, the target number, which our target number is around 300 people, right? We have is space for- even or to, to have a little surplus? That, that's where we're pretty much breaking even. I mean, I think we're still a little bit on the hook, but you know, I think that's where we're comfortable being. Um, if we can get that audience, right? We can have the event, it'll still feel very full um, and we would actually have a little bit of extra space, um, right? Because we have the ability to have what it's 550 people or so. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see uh, the turnout as we get closer to the events, um, as people are starting to make arrangements, and you know, as we start to see ticket sales um, happening. So very exciting, very nervous, very nervous, and <laughs> very yeah. exciting at the same time. So. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine. So, did the tickets just go on sale, or have they been online for a couple of days now? Or how is it? We put the tickets on sale like the day after we signed the contract with the venue. We didn't want to start selling tickets until we were already kind of on the hook, right? Yeah. Um, so that happened. I think because there was so many things happening. My son was graduating from boot camp and then the qualifier events it was pretty pretty non-stop for like two or three weeks for me but uh but yeah i think um i lost my train of thought there sorry yeah no problem um but there's definitely plenty of tickets left still so i imagine you can still just go ahead and make sure that you get your ticket for the event so you can go check out some artist workshops or all of the other events I also see that Archives of the Realm is saying that he's super excited for the event and it's going to be awesome. And we can awesome. only agree. We are so sad that we are not able to just uh, fly yeah. over and uh, come hang out and play some games with everyone. Definitely. So if you are an American and if you are close by, you should definitely go get your tickets and rather do it now than do it later because I think this is going to be, you know, maybe once in a lifetime sorcery event there's going to be everything and then, as we have said before it's going to be the most immersive sorcery event ever hosted in the world so i think you should you you must you must be a fool not to attend so go get your <laughs> tickets definitely yeah i think also like the fact that there are so many events and even if you're a new beginner i really like the whole concept that you can come play come learn to play and maybe you're a new beginner the first day and then the day after you feel comfortable joining a sealed event or something else. Oh, hi, we have Bunny in chat. Just the famous to... Bunny, the one and only. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Your there name she came is. up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bunny. And someone is also saying congratulations on your son and wishing him the best. Okay, we'll put up the next comment. Soon. So, Ra, oh, is yeah. there anything else that we should know about the event that you would love to talk about now? Because we would love to just give you some space and some time to just like talk through the event. Is there going to be all the different kinds of events every day or what is the sure. program looking at like right now? Okay. So um, right now we have on the website listed uh, just one of the rooms. We have, or sorry, two of the rooms. We have the workshop room and the main Paris room that we've uh, scheduled and put out and we're comfortable with the schedule that we put out. And if we get approved for this new space, we'll actually be able to have more events in that room as well. Um, so overall the space and the, the feel of the event, I think is going to be really good. Um, as far as the tickets go. So most of the tickets are coming with events built in, yeah. right? So there's tickets for like entry plus constructed entry plus draft entry plus sealed. And then there's some, some mixed tickets, right? Where maybe you, you want to play three events. You could play two drafts, one constructed two constructed, one draft or three drafts. Right. But not three constructed for some reason. I'm not sure why we didn't <laughs> make that, make that ticket. Um, 
But the, those tickets are going to be used for the time blocks. So even though right now we only have the one room schedule up, there are two other rooms that we can expand out the events into. In fact, one of those rooms is going to have uh, a few more vendors and it's going to have like the learn to play space and the casual play and a couple of like on demand draft type events, right? That are less competitive and more of that casual feel. So that'll kind of be like the casual vendor room. And then we have another room that will have more constructed sealed draft events um, going on. So each of the days, there's three time blocks, which is about a four hour, five hour block of time. And that's where your events will be taking place. During each of those time blocks, there's two workshops and then there'll be up to three rooms of events happening. So you're, you're, you're going to be able to schedule your time. So if, for instance, you're like, oh, I really want to come in and see Alan Pollock do some, an AP, right? Then you're nine o'clock to, to the next block, you know, just fill it with artist events, fill it with going to see him at the AP, maybe hanging out with Drew Tucker at his booth, right? And giving him a chat, getting some, uh, some trolls signed, right? <laughs> so just uh, just a quick pause you there. What is an AP for people who might not know? Oh, sure, sure. So the AP is the artist proof. So with Sorcery, I think they sent out 25 of each card to the artist. And that is a, it's got the, I got a little Sorcery card here. It's got the Sorcery front, Sorcery front. But then the back is just clear, white, actually, just like this. Um, so that they're able to kind of paint uh, a rendition of the card or something, right, on the back of the card to kind of give it its own personal touch. And I've seen a lot of them number them, um, you know, and kind of make them, which they are, the limited run numbered series type thing. Yeah. Um, in fact, we were just talking about Truett uh, possibly doing a fun one <laughs> based on based on some fun conversations in the Discord. And Too Fluent, he shared with us all of his awesome APs for I think Spin Attack uh, that Truett has done, and they're they're quite awesome, right? Very like different angles of Spin Attack, different styles of the Spin Attack card. Um, so the APs for me are just really awesome artist touch, right? Hey, if you could do this again, how would you do it? Right. Um, so getting to see one done live is pretty neat. Um, absolutely. That is so cool. Yeah. And speaking yeah. of like Truid and Too Fluent, definitely also go check back on his channel. He did that awesome interview with the uh, Truid Parish, which is one of the artists who will also be coming. So that's also worth checking out. And dude, indeed, uh, too fluent, definitely a great guy. Can't wait to meet him in, uh, in April. Excuse me. Absolutely. And stop guns. Hello. Welcome to the stream. We are doing good. We're talking about sorcery, which is always fun. So definitely enjoying, <laughs> enjoying the evening here. So for the event, um, is there anything people should know, like in terms of if there's if, are there any like band card? Are there anything that they should know beforehand if they're like building specific decks to come and play constructed, or is everything goes? Um, yeah, we're not. I'm not big on the banning of cards. In fact, anytime I've brought it up, I get not the greatest feedback. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, if somebody wants to rip up an Eric's Curiosa, if it's a real card, like by all means, man, that's yeah. that's on you. Yeah. Go ahead, right. have fun. <laughs> Big baller move right there. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I, I, I hope the card you got was worth it, right? That would, that would be my thing, right? <laughs> um, and then Chaos Twister. I think Chaos Twister, I think it's fine. I, I've, I've seen it played. In fact, I, I, I saw it played like four times at West Virginia. Um, yeah. You know, as soon as I saw I was getting called over to that table, I went ahead and grabbed the, the proxy uh, the proxy card for the Chaos Twister just so they were, you know, oh, okay, they're going to need another Chaos Twister. Um, and it's fine. I think it's a neat way of, of interacting with the game. Um, and as long as it's, it's consistent, right? As long as it's being handled consistent, you know, if, you're, if you've got a problem with a card flying down from the sky affecting the game board, maybe sorcery isn't for you. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying that, but I, I'm saying that, you know, I, I don't think that's that big of a deal. Right. Exactly. And if you're, so and if you don't want to play it, then play cave in, right. 
play uh there's a water one that does a similar thing right so you could still get the same effect hey you want to kill everything on this site fine all right they're all buried right so i think that um no, and that's oh. kind of fun. I mean, seriously, like the whole idea of sorcery is also that you get to do some of that old school shit. You get to do a little crazy stuff and have some fun with it. And I think, I think, I mean, the Karis Twister, as long as it, as you're saying, is handled consistently, it's a lot of fun. Um, and it, and it looks really cool. It's a good vibe. <laughs> hey, the magic story. Thank you for stopping by. Oh, the magic story. And hey, man, yeah. thanks for turning me on to sorcery. I appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. So are you like, are you playing in the event? Do you have time to actually play <laughs> with everything going on or are you just busy organizing? So, so crazy, crazy idea here. Um, I actually have a full-time job uh, as a software engineer at <laughs> a government contractor. So I only get like time in the evenings and time on the weekends to do all the organizing, the Oof. All, all of that stuff. So I use that time to play casually. You know, I, I participate in some of the events. Uh, if, if I'm running an event and we have an open seat, you know, I don't like to give out buys, so I'll fill in a seat. Um, so definitely, definitely would like to play more. Not necessarily play at the super high competitive level, but I, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to get more time in and as we get closer to June, you know. I'm probably going to get some more games. Probably going to have another deck or two. I'm working on a, uh, what is it? Uh, it's a mill concept. I, I haven't got oh. it working yet. I haven't oh, got it working. That sounds spicy. Yeah, yeah. We got the Baldassars and the Anchorman and then the uh, the Raiders. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, the, you know, got some ways and then Men of Ling in there. So trying to trying to make something work um you know you got to survive though in order to <laughs> yeah. to be able yeah, to this problem with mill decks <laughs> got, got to live long enough for it to actually work <laughs> yes exactly exactly so are you yeah. in the event itself are you playing in the event during no. the spring no 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 so i might i might pick up a draft right yeah. but even then i i doubt i'll have the time if i do it'll be great um it will probably be some after hours play for me um on those days yeah so what's up on friday because we were just like reading through and like doing the last video you're having like a party on friday with some of the artists maybe stopping by and a dj yeah and a dj like a spin scout from the community tell us more about that yeah, yeah. So the party at No Land Beyond is going to be pretty epic. Um, they're going to run some events beforehand. And, you know, and I'll go ahead and spoil this here. If we have unclaimed seats coming into the June event for the Quarters and Cup, we're going to have last chance qualifiers. Ooh. Not not just at No Land Beyond. I think we might have one somewhere else as well, Dice City Games. Um, but... That's a possibility, depending on where we are coming into June. Um, I know there was there was a seat that wasn't able to get taken in West Virginia, and then number nine had already qualified, and number ten is MIA. So you know, if we keep trying to reach out to them, that's a seat. Who's going to get it? You know, and if I can't find out before an event and I hand it to like you know the Connecticut event, for instance. Um, then we're going to have to do something to not have yeah. an empty seat, right? To kind of let other people have a chance. Um, but it'll still be a qualifier event, right? It'll still be, you'll have to play to earn the seat. Um, so none of that will change. Um, and you'll have a chance to sit at the, the table, right? For the cup. Um, so those things are happening in the beginning of the day. Then uh, I think we have it scheduled around five till about eight, maybe 10 we're going to have the social club there. So I'll be there. Uh, I guess I can give you a couple of names. I know that <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Mangus will be there. Um, I know that Tony Sudlow will be there. Drew Tucker will be there. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about everyone else yet. I haven't got a, a solid confirmation, but I do have a strong feeling that most of them will be present um, at that at that time during the event. Um, and then as we get into the later part of the night, we're going to have spin Scott cutting down the lights, <laughs> spinning up the, spinning up the, the tables. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. A big old dance party, um, for everybody just, to, you know, just have some fun. You know, we've played sorcery maybe, or you're ready to play sorcery, you know, meet some people 
enjoy the atmosphere. The place, No Land Beyond, great, great store, right? They have lots of game space. They have, you know, their bar with pizza. They have their game library. So if you wanted to come and like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to do sorcery on Saturday, that's fine. They have a game library. You pay them like five bucks a person and you just pick a game and you just play all day, right? So you could play. Perfect. Well, oh my gosh. It's, it's two walls. It's like these bookcases behind me, but just two walls of it, right? As you go into their, um, their dining space. So really awesome place to have, you know, a party, right? And, yeah, you know, we'll sure. have other events, but yeah, it, it'll be really nice. I can't wait to see what uh, Spin Scott comes up with. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Hey, Sirkan, thank you so much. That's really cool of you. Thank yes, you. Yes, gifted some memberships. That is really awesome. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah. But that sounds so fun. And I love the whole idea about really getting to sort of talk with the artists also like during this event more casually and they have some time to go back and forth with questions and just have some conversations because I presume that when they're vending or painting, it's going to be a bit more pressed for time. Um, so that's so awesome that you get to like interact with them during the evening there. Those mm -hmm. artists are going to be so drunk. Everybody's <laughs> going to come over and say, hi, and uh, have a beer. And <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but, but, I mean, but it sounds really great, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And also, like, it's also, I mean, it's just a nice way to have, like, a little introduction, people talking, hanging out, and then playing some games all weekend. It sounds like the perfect weekend. That's what we're trying. Well, I mean, perfect weekend's ideal, right? But uh, I mean, we're definitely trying to make yeah. sure that we are providing a an encompassing experience, right? Where it's not just like, oh yeah, we went to we went to a tournament. It's the same thing. We're not going to go to this one, right? This is going to be like you guys have said. It's going to be immersive, right? It's not yeah. just about coming and playing. It's about checking out the art, right? When is, when are you ever going to get a chance to go to a sorcery art gallery? Like when is yeah. that ever going to be? Exactly. Yeah. So and then also having the you know opportunity to actually sneak there and stay there. You don't have to commute. You don't have to travel each day to come to the event. You simply get up and you are there. It's going to be awesome. They have a restaurant on site too. So if you really didn't want to leave the hotel at all, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all right there. You know, you get your you get your ride to the to the hotel. You're there. You stay there. Then you leave and go home. Right. And it's it's all right there. Um, Yep. Yeah, so I think uh, overall, like I said, the 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 place is good. One thing I, I I'm whoop, I'm trying to explore a little bit more, um, and that is the the family aspect. So one of the things I'm missing in my event this year is the the family aspect. I I just don't have the space this year to offer activities, but we are looking to partner and and work with some of the activities in the area. So Baltimore has a lot of things in the downtown area for families and even for specifically kids, right? We have yeah. this really cool pirate ship where the kids can go on like a pirate adventure in the harbor where they're actually on a boat and they launch uh, cannons and <clears throat> it's really, really neat experience. Um, you know, if you're into pirates and ships and stuff, <laughs> then we have like Fort Discovery or Port Discovery. It's Port Discovery. Sorry, we have Port Discovery, which is uh, like this really interact, really large interactive science museum, right? And so that that and I think there's a few other places that we're looking at. So we're trying to to get with them. Oh, the National Aquarium. How could I forget that? Right. Oh, That's cool. uh, lots and lots of cool uh, sea life. They have a jellyfish exhibit that. I don't know. It's, it's really amazing if you've ever had a chance to go to, to any of those things. Um, so we're working to maybe build partnerships and, and help give some deals. So people who do want to come and they do have their families and like, what is my family going to do while I'm sitting here playing games for two days? We're working on trying to, to help that out, right? To see if we can create partnerships and get some deals for, for those activities so that, you know, it can be kind of for everybody. Oh, I love that idea. I think that's great because, I mean, sort of, you know, the idea is that you want to be able to go along, but if the family can tag, tag along and have some activities going around as well, that's pretty awesome because that makes it more smooth for everybody. So certain gifted 10 corporate guide memberships. So I think you can just wow. click the memberships and there's still some left and then you get a free membership for a while. So go check that out and pick and one of those. Yeah, that is awesome. Thank you very much. 
Uh, thank you so much, Sleep Stories. It was really great having you in the stream. Yeah, and, and maybe we it's also the, the cue to, to sum up. Um, yeah, for sure. So definitely there's no discussion. People should go. We have the link down below in the description so they can go straight to the webpage. And on the webpage, you can buy tickets. And as you said, there's a lot of different combinations for entry plus different kinds of events, depending on what people want to do. Um, and as we explored, like during the last hour, there's so many workshops going on. There will be sorcery art on the walls. You can go sleep afterwards, after the event, you can dine at the hotel. It really is the complete experience. So any last words that you want to sort of maybe spoil or anything fun you want to add here at the end of it? Um, well, obviously, you know, please buy tickets. Uh, yeah, <laughs> come yeah. to come, sure. come we to our three hundred and we want five hundred. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the obligatory piece. But uh, I will say this: a little, a little special piece. Um, so I'm working with one of the artists on an idea that I'm hoping will become a piece that we can show and possibly even auction at the event, and that is a a very popular sorcery card. Um, as a very famous person and I'm, that's all i'm gonna say that's all i'm gonna say Ooh, I, I like that you people are a little spoiler here yeah. so uh when will we find out more about this should people like where can we check out social club or the spring social where should people go to follow you okay so the best place right now for us to get information is to go to discord.sorcery.social and that'll take you to our discord link you join our discord community we are posting updates. We're querying the community about input, right? Right now, we're having discussions on finalizing the quarters and cup format, right? Yeah. Right now, we're talking about, hey, instead of six rounds of constructed, what if we did three rounds of sealed and three rounds of constructed and a top eight draft, right? And we're getting some pretty good feedback. So I wouldn't be surprised if a format similar to that uh, became what we ended up with. So, you know, definitely join the discord, join the discussion, right. About the event, help us understand what the needs and wants are, right. As we start to finalize things, it becomes harder to, <laughs> to go back and make changes of like, Oh, yeah. well, there's this huge interest here and well, we've already got this stuff laid out. So, we'll, you know, not to say everything's set in stone, but you know, joining the discord will keep you up to date and allow you to help engage in the conversation and the, the event as a whole so oh, that's epic. that sounds great yes i think it's going to be the greatest source event ever and i wish you the best of luck with it and also thank you for you know really building a community and lifting this huge assignment as you said you have a full-time job this is definitely another full-time job <laughs> so you're working definitely over hours to make this dream come true for the players and the community out there so thank, thank you for organizing this huge event Mm. Well, thank you guys for having me. Thank you for giving me a platform to be able to talk about it and help answer questions, make sure that, you know, everybody understands what we're trying to do. So thank you. Absolutely. And thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate you taking an entire hour out for us and just like talking through the events and letting us know all the cool stuff that's happening. And who knows, maybe next year will be the year that we can come join the event as well. We will have fingers crossed. <laughs> that would be really awesome. So everybody, if you enjoyed this, please do hit that like button and consider becoming a subscriber. We do loads of sorcery content and we also have a Discord that you can check out down below in the description. So thank you so much for joining and we will see you in the next video. Bye.